For well over two years, he has managed one of the biggest oil and gas firms operating in Ghana. Now, uh, Kukwa Ochi says it's time to bow out. Talo Ghana today announced that its managing director and executive vice president of Talo Oil PLC, Kukwa Ochi, will be retiring from the company on the 30th of June. Mr. Ochi will hand over his responsibilities to Wissam Al Munthiri, who has spent 17 years with BP in various um, upward operations, leadership, and asset management positions around the world. Well, joining us to talk about his time at Talo is uh, Mr. Kwekwa Oche. Um, great to see you, sir. Congratulations on the remarkable feat you have chalked at Talo Ghana since you took over as MD. What's it been like uh, being at the helm of affairs at Talo? It's been a it's been a good experience. Um, you know, the oil and gas uh, business is really a, a fast paced, uh, high intensity. Um, there's a lot of um, focus on safety because of all the potential opportunities for for things to go wrong in the in the high seas. Uh, we have a young workforce uh, because the oil and gas industry is young in Ghana as well. And then we also have a multinational workforce because that is also the nature of the oil and gas industry. We have uh, um, a management team comes has come from uh, England, from Singapore, from Malaysia, um, India, all over the place. So it's a multinational workforce. It's fast paced. Uh, the, the stakes are high um, and the, the need for a safe uh, environment is, is paramount. So there's a lot of pressure to perform, to deliver uh, uh, all the time. And uh, what would you say were some of the great accomplishments you attained there at Talo? I think there are a number of things we did um, in, from a production point of view. We did meet a number of challenges uh, a couple of years back. We really changed the team over the last uh, 12 months mm. and we're seeing the fruits of the new operations team uh, you see that this year in particular, uh, we have a very stable production. We're meeting our guidance. Uh, you can imagine these things don't happen with a flick of a switch. And they've been nine to 12 months in, 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 the, in, the, in the making this happen. So that's an important area. We did also a lot of training uh, during the, the last couple of years, especially our line managers, empowering uh, our, our managers and our staff. Uh, because that's really the key to success. And we also spent quite a bit of time um, looking at our local content initiatives and making sure that we were making an impact in that area. Of course, um, you can never do enough, and there are always challenges, but mm. uh, I think there are areas that we spent quite a bit of time and focus on uh, during the time I've been here. It, it, of course, I, um, last thing I'd say is we did chalk 50 million barrels up from 10 mm. in my time, and that was a, a great feat for us. In May last year, you were appointed EVP, Executive Vice President of Talo Oil PLC, the first Ghanaian to be in that position. Uh, was that the highlight of your time there? Well, it was a, a great um, uh, um, achievement from my point of view, and I think it was also great recognition from the company because uh, the company basically um, understood and recognized that the Ghana business had to be at the executive table. So yes, it was a, a very high point. Mm. Uh, previously, you were talking about some challenges while you were there. What were some of the challenges you, you had to deal with? Well, you know, currently the oil, oil industry is going through some uh, crisis in terms of the oil price. It's been at an all time, a 20 year low. Uh, it's slowly climbing up mm. above $30 uh, this week. Uh, all of that is fairly recent. I think um, uh, six months ago, we had some huge uh, changes in the leadership. Our CEO, our head of exploration, and a number of our executive uh, vice presidents also left. Um, and some of that was just a culmination of many things that had happened over the course of time within the company and not just in Ghana. And so we've had to grapple with a lot of those. We've had to have uh, let some people go uh, over that period of time. And that's always difficult. I think the challenge today with the oil price where it is, is to make sure that the company survives and is liquid throughout the period. Well, while we talk about uh, challenges, uh, let's talk about COVID-19, because it's uh, one of the 
current challenges the oil and gas industry has had to deal with is dealing a blow to oil markets around the world. How do you anticipate this would affect the fortunes of the oil and gas industry here in Ghana? Well, it already has, hasn't it? I mean, the, the, the immediate impact of COVID is that it's brought down demand for global oil significantly uh, by some measures, at least 10 million barrels a day. Mm. Uh, the airlines aren't traveling, um, you know, lo a lot of um, reduction and even just car transportation. So we're already seeing that in terms of the price of oil globally, and that affects us. It means the revenues coming in for Tullow, the revenues coming in for the Ghana government have been low. In terms of the actual day-to-day -day operation, what we have had to do is make sure that we have a, a pipeline of um, making sure that our workers coming in offshore, coming in from abroad, can come in safely and reliably. We've been observing, uh, first of all, we've been able to arrange with the government support a charter flights to come in every two weeks to bring in our offshore workers. Mm. Uh, we observing the quarantine requirements of government, so they come in for 14 days. Uh, we do a lot of testing before they come, when they come, after they come. And we're really pleased to say that so far uh, there have been no incidents of uh, tests, uh, cases of COVID in the workforce, um, which also means that production has not been affected. And that's because of a lot of the checks that we put in place. And uh, well, aside from the impact of COVID-19, are you excited about how far the country's oil and gas industry has come? Um, what can we do better? You know, Talo has played an important role in our quest to commercialize oil and gas. You know, when you think about it, the industry is really quite young in Ghana. This is the 10th year of commercial production. And um, that's not a long time when you look across to Nigeria, our neighbors, they've been doing it for 60 years. Mm. Even folks like Equatorial Guinea, they've been doing it for 30 plus years. So we, we, we've actually come quite a long way in terms of building really a brand new industry in a, in a short period of time. Uh, you know, I, I like to believe that we can do a lot more. Last year, we opened up a, a bid round. We got some new investors uh, trying to come in and um, really the hope is that over the next five to ten years we can bring in more investment, more players, uh, generate more production and also um, expand the local industry. It doesn't help when the oil price is $30 a barrel because um, very few firms can spend a lot of discretionary capital at those levels. Mm. But uh, oil is cyclical and one hopes is that even as it's gone down it will slowly come back up and then we can uh, see some of these new investments coming in. If anybody should ask you what is the biggest or the greatest legacy you're leaving behind, what would you say? And uh, for people who are wondering, what next for you after Talo? So uh, I think there are quite a few things that I'd like to believe I was uh, a part of. Mm. I think one of the most important from a Talo point of view, because I'm leaving and I'm handing over to somebody else, is we spent a lot of time over the last 12 months um, you know, working with government to make sure there was legislation in place to allow companies like Talo, uh, it was the case for ACA, to be able to explore areas that, because we had started production, were no longer available to us. And so that was evidence in new legislation that was granted to ACA at the end of last year, but it's also now available for Talo, because we do have um, quite a number of areas within what we call our production area that we would like to exploit, we couldn't. But in addition to that, I like to believe we did, as I mentioned before, quite a lot of uh, management training, empowering our workforce, uh, trying to give opportunity to our young people. And I'm, I'm really quite proud of that um, as, as just two things to mention. Uh, what's next? Um, stay tuned. Um, when I know, I'll let you know as well. <laughs> Well, wish you all the best, uh, Mr. Kukowski, and it's been great uh, speaking with you tonight. All the best in your next endeavor. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure as well. Thank all you. All right. Thank you. That was uh, Kukowski, outgoing MD of Talo, Ghana.